Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, click the Hire Us button or the Contact Us link, fill that information out, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. So we are still working our way through all of the questions that everybody asked about the UXG Pro. So next week, don't get sad. I am doing a, I'm working on a really cool Grand Stream UCM video uh, that is coming early next week. There's a lot of information in it, so that one's slowed down a little bit. So in the meantime, I am answering these UXG questions because they need to be answered. And one of the uh, top questions that I get is, you know, we've got this piece of hardware that's got all these resources. What kind of routing can the UXG do? So the first thing you need to do is you need to remember what kind of tool, what kind of device this is. This is part of the Unify ecosystem. And here is the traffic management screen. Uh, the only difference between what you're seeing now and what you saw in the video is there was a Unify network update and now we're on 7.1.61. And then the OS of the cloud key was updated. But th that's just moving some things to you know, general availability. We're going to go over a lot of this stuff because there are a lot of changes. But I want to talk about this. So what the UXG can do is it can do static routing and that's it. That's what this device is meant to do at this point. Are they going to add dynamic routing? I don't know. Do, does it need dynamic routing? Probably not. I would probably say 99% of the customers that are using UDMs, USGs, UXGs, they don't need dynamic routing protocols and static routing is going to work just fine. So if you need OSPF or uh, BGP or some other, you know, dynamic routing protocol, you're going to look at edge routers, uh, UISP uh, routers, or you're going to look at some other appliance that can do it. OpenSense, you know, uh, pick a Linux distribution that can do dynamic routing. You're going to look at Juniper. You're going to look at Cisco. You're going to look at different boxes not a UXG, not a UDM, not a USG, if you need dynamic routing. Now, if, you know, people are going to try to like get real specific on this, uh, dynamic routing, I guess you could say that if you have a dynamic IP, then it's dynamic, but it's really just static, right? It's internal and it's, it's not dynamic in the traditional sense with OSPF or BGP or name uh, a routing protocol that a lot of these boxes, you know, support. So we're over here under traffic management. We're going to go down and we're going to go to static routes. Now there's a difference between traffic routes and static routes. And we're going to get into that in another video. That's one that's going to get a little bit more into the weeds, but right here we can create a new static route and we're either going to make it this gateway or we're going to select a layer three switch. Now, if we're going to, we're going to call this um, just test route. And here you can put the distance or the cost. So if we're doing like uh, two default routes that have unequal cost or different uh, uh, distances, right? So you would have um, a route that goes out to the internet and one would have a distance of one, which is going to have a higher priority over the same route that has a distance of 10 or 250, right? So I can have different gateways. And if the one um, with the distance of one is unavailable, then I'm automatically going to start sending out of the one with 253, right? So it's a really cool way that you can do some default routing or some static routing uh, that's kind of dynamic. Uh, then your destination network. So we're going to say uh, one, and then this would, this is how you denote, um, uh, going out to the internet, your default route. And then we could either do next hop would be an IP address or we can make it an interface. So if we had one of those interfaces configured with, you know, something different or black hole just means that it dead ends the traffic, the traffic goes nowhere. So a lot of times if we want to send everything to just, you know, a dynamically configured interface, we're going to do an interface route. Um, uh, or if we want to specify that IP and be very specific, we're going to put, um, you know, and, and I'm just putting some nonsense in there for the moment. You know, we would route that out 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. Uh, 
So we could do that. So that is the routing that the UXG does. And I am now a Ubiquity affiliate. So if you'd like to buy a UXG, a cloud key or anything like that, I'm going to leave affiliate links down below over to my uh, Unify store. And they are clearly marked as affiliate links. There's no, we're, you know, we're trying to follow all the FTC rules where if uh, we're presenting you with a link, no matter where it's at, it should be clearly identified as an affiliate link. So there's no surprises there. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, please subscribe, please comment and share, please follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below. If you've got more questions about the UXG, ask those down below because I am still compiling the list and we are going to get through every single question that everyone asks about the UXG. Um, if you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form, click the hire us button, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you'd like to support the channel, uh, we do. We're going to have Amazon and Ubiquity affiliate links down below, and we also have our uh, Patreon link, and thank you to those folks. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.